All right, this is a little demonstration of how to use a site called Obvibase. Obvibase is a free uh, online database program. Uh, database software can be kind of expensive. So this is a free alternative. It's good for at least learning how databases work and some of the concepts of it. So that's what this demo is going to be all about. Just showing you how to make a real simple uh, uh, database inside Obvibase and then how to do a search through it and you'll see how useful it can be. Okay, so Obvibase, you click on it here. Okay, it's obvibase.com. It's going to ask you if you want to sign in. I'm going to use sign in with Google because that's what I use for everything. And this is actually an old one, so I'm going to create a new uh, database. So your screen might look like this. If not, just go to main menu and go to new, and you're going to create a new database. So I'm going to create one here, and I'm going to call this, uh, let's say, how about hockey database? Or hockey equipment database, how about that? Let's go with that. Okay, now the way you have to sort of imagine a database is it's kind of like a spreadsheet in a way. So you're going to have rows and columns. Now a spreadsheet, like what you would do normally is put the, the headers at the top. And we're going to do the same thing here, okay? So if I'm thinking about hockey equipment, what kind of things might I have? I might have uh, a manufacturer. I might have a model. I might have a price. Now, price is going to be a number, so we're going to go with that. Price. What else do we have here? <clears throat> checkbox. We could do checkbox items in this as well, which is pretty useful. Uh, well, let's just go with that for now. Let's just go with that. Okay, so these are my different headers. Now, date added and ID. I'm going to leave these here. The ID, this is called the primary key. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that every single item in your database has a unique identifier in case there's things that are exactly the same. So let, let me add some rows in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's add a row in with this plus down here. And let's say manufacturer is Bauer. Oh my God, I can't even spell it. I think, I, I think that's right. And it's a hockey stick. I have no idea. 4 RT, RT, like that. No idea. Making it up. Price is going to be $75.99. Okay, let's add another one here. Manufacturer, uh, let's put Canadian Tire. And the model is going to be Youth Helmet. And the price of that is $49.99. And we're going to add in, we'll add in a couple more things here. Uh, let's do another Bauer item. Bauer uh, gloves, and we'll say that the gloves cost thirty-seven ninety-nine. Again, I'm just making this stuff up. I don't really know. It doesn't really matter, anyways. And then, uh, hmm, that's what's another manufacturer of hockey stuff? Uh, I'm not sure. We'll just put in uh, sport check. I know sport check doesn't make stuff, but. I'm drawing a blank for different hockey manufacturing companies right now. Nike makes stuff too, I think, and Reebok. Okay, so sport check, uh, net guard. Maybe the net guard is eighteen fifty. And actually, I'll just add one more here. Okay, Nike jersey, and the jersey is going to cost one hundred and seventy-five dollars. Okay. So I've added in five different records. Each of these rows is called a record. So this is all of the information about one particular item. And this item is a Bauer hockey stick for RT. It's $75.99. Okay, these things are called fields. So each of these, these, these contain all the field data about each record. So you have to remember that, okay? These are field names up here. And you can add as many as you want. And uh, like I said, each row is a record. So they both start with the letter R, so it's an easy way of remembering it, okay? A row is a record, and it all relates to one item. Now, this ID column, okay, this is the primary key in this particular database. The reason we do that is because what if, for example, the store decides, hey, I'm going to have two of those Bauer hockey sticks. And you know what? It's the exact same model. 
and it's $75.99 because they're two identical hockey sticks, right? So we use this primary key to, to distinguish between those two. So this is the first hockey stick and this is the second hockey stick. So they have to go in as separate items and we use a primary key to just to help identify or separate them. Another example where you might see something like that, and it's not always a simple idea like this, but you might see something like that with a serial number, for example. So you might have 10 TVs at Best Buy, all be exactly the same, like same price, same manufacturer, everything. The only difference is the serial number. And that functions in the same sort of way, okay? So that's that's what that's for, just to separate them. This just shows when I added them in. I mean, you could remove this if you wanted, uh, but we'll leave that for now. Okay, now, how is this useful? Now, imagine I wanted to find all of the Bauer equipment in my store. Right now, I know I got three of them. They're all sort of mixed up. So what I can do here is go to Manufacturer and search for Bauer. And it will isolate everything, and I can see it real easily, which is nice. Okay. Now, you imagine that this is a spreadsheet. And imagine there's a million rows in it, and it's all mixed up like this. It'd be very difficult to actually figure out what the Bauer stuff is, right? Because it's all mixed and matched. That's why a database is useful. It's really easy to search and sort through them, and that's what makes them powerful. Okay, let's do. Let's try a different one here. Let's find all of the items that are, let's say, greater than fifty bucks. There's all my items that are greater than fifty dollars. Very, very easy and quick to do. So it doesn't take a lot of effort in order to search for that, right? Whereas in a spreadsheet, that would be a pain. You'd have to sort of sort it and maybe you scroll down and find where the $50 mark is and you'd have to highlight and copy and paste it. It's not that easy to actually do a search in a huge amount of items. If it's only like six items like this, it's not a big deal. But if you had a million items, it would be. Whereas a database is very, very simple for, for things like that. So, and, and again, you could do multiple que uh, queries. We can do Bauer items that are over 50 bucks. And that's a query and I can see exactly what uh, matches those conditions. So query is another name for search, right? So that's all it means. I'm doing a search on this on this database to find what I'm looking for. Uh, what are some other things you can do with this? You can sort if you want. So you can sort it. You can also sort by price. So you can do anything you want here. Um, if you wanted to do like a checkbox item, I'll show you how that works. You can say something like, uh, I don't know, uh, is used. So maybe some of this equipment is used. I can like check off, okay, that's a used item, for example, right? And then I can search for things that are checked or things that are unchecked. I can find all my used items like that. Or I can just take everything off. So, so you can use that for this. You can do like check boxes for, for certain things, like if it's used. These are usually like true or false type things. Um, you can also do multiple choice, which is pretty cool. So actually, this would have been really good for manufacturer. So I'll, I'll just show you here. Company. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, uh, go under settings. And values are from a list. I'm going to put in Bauer, Nike, Reebok. Oh my God, two art, yeah. Um, Canadian Tire, like that. And then let's go back. And what's cool about this is I can just click in like this. So you can do multiple choice ones, which really makes life even easier for the user once you've made your database, right? Um, what else can you do? You can delete rows if you need to. So you can delete a row, although the ID won't change. It, it'll stay there. Uh, and that's basically about it. That's all you really need to know about this type of database. It's really easy. It's basically idiot proof. Um, when you go to print these things, they generally come out as a PDF, I believe. Oh, no, it's actually going to come out as a print. It's fine. So it looks like this. Um, sometimes they, you might want to download it as a PDF, like if you export it. Oh, no, it exports as a CSV. So they must have changed this. At CSV, that will open up in Excel, no problem, or Google Sheets if you wanted to. It'll just look like a spreadsheet. So printing is no problem either. Um, 
And to get to all of your databases, you just go to open and you can see all your databases you have here. Okay, so again, this is just uh, how to use Obvibase in a nutshell. Very easy program. Just experiment with it. Pretty simple. It's not difficult to use.